Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can, of course, follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. I obviously didn't have to think of that Twitter handle for a long time, did I? So, welcome to Monday's edition of the MUFC Daily. So, the title says Ollie was sacked after the Liverpool game. Is that clickbait, Mick? And you tried to lure me in? No. Although I thought it was a great title to kind of bring people in. It is a bit of a tease, so I apologise if you're offended about that. I'm an honest guy after all. But no, I genuinely believe that Manchester United sacked Ole Gunnar Solskjaer after the Liverpool game. So why is he still there? Because they're still deliberating with the next manager. So Ole is literally in a caretaker role again. That's what I believe. Also, I'll, I will, you know, introduce Exhibit A. And this is this, um, what's his name? Fabrizio, no, is it Fabrizio? Yeah, Fabrizio Romano, right? That's his name, right? The, the guy who knows everything in football and tells us everything. And some people are really disliking him now. Now, he made a vid video that got out. I don't know how it was on his channel. I don't know how. But it basically said that Manchester United had sacked Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He made this video last week. It got out there. I don't know why. Now, now Mark Goldbridge reacted to this and said, well, what Fabrizio does, he makes a video for scenarios. So he would have made that video just in case Manchester United sacked Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. That's what Mark's saying. And look, I love Mark, you know, part of the inspiration for me to do my channel is Mark Goldbridge, people like Ping Pong Flicks and different YouTubers out there. And so, you know, I love the guy, but I don't always have to agree with him. That's his opinion and he's entitled to it. But my opinion is that Fabrizio leaked this video unofficially on purpose to tell the fans unofficially without blatantly saying it that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was sacked last week after the Liverpool game. Now, he can't say it. I would go deeper than that. I would say that maybe Manchester United Football Club inadvertently want us to know that Oli's already been sacked and they're now trying to bring in another manager. I believe Oli Gunnar Solskjaer will be officially removed as Manchester United manager um, during the international break. At least I hope so. Um, but, you know, that's what I think. I think it's in motion. I, look, I think their eyes were opened after the Liverpool game. They thought, well, this can't carry on. This is ridiculous. And I would think that players went up to the, up to the board and the Glaziers and, and, and said, you know what? Do I call them the Glaziers like they're window cleaners? Uh, the Glazers. I always say Glaziers by mistake. Please forgive me. We don't care about their names. We don't like them anyway, right? But, yeah, I think players would have gone up to the chief executive and said, you know, this is ridiculous. He's a nice, lovely guy, if he is. I'm not sure if he is. I'm not even convinced he is. But... You know, I'm just saying. And so maybe he was... I. This is why... No, I not maybe. I genuinely believe this, that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was sacked after the Liverpool game. So I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. I hope it's true, and I think it's true. So let's just wait and see what happens there. It's The international break is very interesting, but I don't think it even matters if he wins, loses, or draws. Now, he's out. He's finished in the international break. He has to be removed for another two reasons. If, the, if he remains our manager till the close season and remains even then as our manager, we'll lose Van der Beek and Pogba. We can't afford to lose Van der Beek and Pogba. Van der Beek is more than a player with potential. He's a fabulous player. And we bought him for a mere scant these days, 37, 38, 40 million. And we dumped him on the bench. Gary Neville was funny. Really funny when he was talking about, oh, Van der Beek sitting on the bench and now Sancho, if he's not careful, is going to be doing the same thing. Gary, 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 why can't you just be honest and blame your friend Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, the Manchester United manager? He's the reason those two players aren't playing. Not them. He's the one who picks the fucking system. Well, we'll talk about the system. Um very very shortly but Gary Neville sits there on Sky Sports acting like this is nothing to do with Oli it's not the club Gary it's the manager the club wanted Oli to buy those players they're world class players with potential and they've been dumped on the bench barely getting any game time so, um, um, Van der Beek being promised game time so he wouldn't go to Everton then he didn't get any game time 
This is despicable treatment of players, but more importantly, it's despicable treatment of human beings. So this is why I feel that Oli Gunnar Solskjaer isn't the great manager that everyone says he, he is. Anyway, let's go on to this. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a morning throat because it's morning. Please forgive me again. But yeah, I was watching the United Stand last night and they were talking about this formation and how it's good and how it doesn't have to be a negative formation. Let me be, again, absolutely clear about this. It may not have to be a negative formation, but every time Oli plays it, and when he played it on Saturday, it was a negative formation, and under Oli, it will always be a negative formation. He's a negative manager. I mean, guys at the United Stand, you're acting like Oli hasn't been playing defensive, negative, counter-attacking football since the very day he took over as caretaker manager. He's obsessed with the counter-attack. That's also what he, all he talks about. So the system may be different, but the way he plays is not different. He's still a defensive, negative, counter-attacking manager. That's it. That's the only way he can utilise world-class players. And I think that says something very negative about him. But we're all talking about systems. Manchester United, and forget the three and the five at the back, it's seven at the back. That's what this system is. Seven at the fucking back. That's how scared he is to actually play proper, vibrant, attacking football. He's got some of the best attackers in world football. You know, the other day, people were having to go, Ronaldo, for not tracking back. Ronaldo does track back, actually. But that's not his fucking job. Eric Cantona used to track back now and again. But that wasn't his fucking job. Cantona was up front you know, threading the eye of the needle in with his passes and scoring wonderful world-class goals. You know, he was a creator and a goal scorer. No one had a go at Cantona for not tracking back. Just you dare have a go at Cantona and see what happens to you. But my point is, it's just Oli defenders trying to find an out for the criticism that he's getting. So it does, as I said before, the formations he plays and the players he picks are irrelevant. He's not capable of being a good, even a solid, even a mediocre in-game manager. Match, he's an awful match day manager. His team selections are erratic. He doesn't know how to utilise his squad so everyone's happy. Fergie used to do it. It's not rocket science. Lots of managers do it. He wants to play. I mean, he plays his favourites. But I don't understand what Van der Beek's done wrong. I don't understand what Sancho's done wrong. They're out. That's it. But what's worse here is this manager believes he has the divine right to expect those players to be happy on the bench. You know why? Why do you think why? Because the man himself, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, was an unamb unambitious, unambitious player who was on the bench. He said it himself. I've been on the bench before. I didn't like it. You loved it, mate. You loved it. That's why you had an opportunity to be a first team player for Spurs. They tried to sign you and you decided to stay at Old Trafford because you were happy on the bench. No one said to you, Ollie, if you stay, you're going to get more game time because that was never going to happen. We had York and Cole at the time. You had no chance. And then Van Nistelrooy. So you had no chance of being a first team player. But it always goes back to you as a person, doesn't it? And it's like parents try and initiate their kids to be like them and like what they like and hate what they like. And it's like this situation. Well, I don't know what Van Der Beek's problem is. I used to be on the bench. That was you, mate. This player actually has the potential to achieve better things than you. And I know you won a European Cup and you won Premier League, blah, blah, blah. I get it. But this is a very special player. A better player than Solskjaer was. Although I respect him as a striker. He was a wonderful striker, Ollie. He really was. But the point being, you can't come out publicly and say, well, I was on the bench, so that's all right then. That's, a, that's an outrageous, ridiculous statement to make. Ridiculous. So today is Monday, and I know a lot of you are still waiting there, hoping he'll get the sack. Well, that's why this video is a pretty good one, because that's what I believe. And I've given you the reasons why. Because I think Romano knows he's been fired, but he can't say it. 
And I don't think, I think it's probably not Conte they're going for, or someone like, um, like the Leicester manager. Um, I think they're going for someone we don't even know about. Maybe they are going for Zidane. Now, people have said Zidane's this, Zidane's that. Oh, he's not very good. He wasn't very good in the league. He was only good in the Cups and things like that. Listen, Zidane is a very, very special... He was a very special player and he's a very good coach. And let's be honest, he's better than what we've got. But let's be clear here. My ideal manager, and I don't really have my mind on any individual um, in particular, but I think we need a bit more experience, a, a, a bit of nous, you know, a bit of nuance as a manager. You know, I think even Zidane hasn't got much experience as a manager, so I would rather go for someone a little bit experienced, someone who's got pedigree as well. Um, now, I don't know who's available to do that right now. I don't think anyone is, and there lies the problem. And maybe that's why Ollie's still in a job. But I don't know what's going on. All I can tell you is, I've got a feeling that Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer will be removed as Manchester United manager in the international break. And we haven't got long for that. We've got the Atalanta game and we've got the City game. I think we'll lose the Atalanta game. Yep. And I think we'll win the City game. Comment down below and let me know. Do you think we'll beat Atalanta and City? Or do you agree with me that we will drop, we will lose to Atalanta and beat City? City look really beatable right now. But then again, look at how bad Liverpool were at the weekend and they did us 5-0. So who knows? And I want you to remember something else. Yes, you can only beat what's in front of you, but Tottenham are a terrible, terrible team. And my final thought before I go, by the way, is this. Tottenham couldn't score in a brothel. So why were United so ultra-defensive? Take a think about that for a minute. That's how negative and bad this coach is that we had. Spurs couldn't score in a fucking brothel. But he came out with seven at the back. It's ridiculous. We could have played a normal everyday formation, been ultra-attacking and still beat Spurs because they're not confident and at the moment they're not very good. But he played seven players behind the ball. Seven players at the back. Basically, that's what he did. I want you to think about that and to unpack tomorrow. And if you are Ollie, think about if that's right. You like having an orgasm and getting a boner about this formation. Think about what it means. It means negativity. Don't go telling me that this can be a positive formation. Yes, it can. If Conte plays it, it's a positive formation. If Oli plays it, it's so he, he can stick seven players in defence so nothing gets past those players. We saw the game. We were playing a team with uh, you know less confidence um, than me when I was at school. And they came in and played ultra defensive. It was a terrible game. That's how Man. That's what Man United will do to games under Oli. From here on forth, that's what's going to happen. Is that the football you want to play? Is that the football? Is that the football you want to see? But is that the football Oli Gunnar Solskjaer promised us when he first came in? He said Manchester United have got a certain type of tradition with the football they play, and I aim to play it. And he's never played it. Not once. This has been the MUFC Daily. I met your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wives. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you never miss this perfection. And of course, I'll be back tomorrow with even more MUFC Daily. Until then, goodbye.